Hello, if you want to create something similar, just open Blender and delete the light. We will use the default cube. Go to edit mode, right click, subdivide, switch the number to 10. Then go back to object mode, select the modifier. We will use a displacement modifier, two times, and a subdivision surface modifier. Shade smooth and create two textures for the displacement modifier. Go to the texture tab, select clouds for the first one, set size to 2, switch to the second texture, create a Veroni texture and set the size to 1. Go back to the modifier tab and select the first texture you created to the top. Set the strain value to 0 0.2 and on the second texture set the strength to 0 0.15. Apply all modifiers. Add the icosphere. Increase the subdivision and go to the modifier tab and add another subdivision surface modifier to smooth the surface, apply it. Now add a new displacement modifier. We will use the first texture with clouds. Set the strength to 1. Shade smooth. And apply. Then scale it down a little bit. Switch to edit mode and make it fit in all angles. Go to the shader view and let's create the ice cube material. Press Shift A S and then search for the noise texture. Then the same for uh, the bump texture puts the factor into the height and the normal into the normal. Then search for a color ramp and also put the factor into the factor and the color into the roughness node. Then adjust the values of uh, black and white of the color ramp a little bit. The black just to very dark gray and um, the white to a bit darker white just to make sure that our ice cube is not fully transparent and not fully diffuse then adjust the settings for the noise texture a little bit set the distance of the bump node to 0 0.5 but it depends on your object size and turn up the transition to 1. Then go to the render tab, switch to cycles and also to GPU compute. Then go to the world shading and we will add uh, an HDRI that came with Blender by default. The Sunwise HDRI. Now we will add the material to the icosphere that's in the inside of the cube. We will use a volume node, set the density to 0 and the emission strength to 5 and turn down the color a little bit. You can play around with all those values until it fits how you like it. Now combine the cube and the icosphere to one object. Now 
at a glass, a cup or anything you want for the simulation. I added my my glass you have seen in the beginning. Now move the cube to the top of the glass and rotate it and duplicate it three times. So we have four cubes and put them to a position you like. Now go to the glass and add a rigid body, set it to passive and set the shape to mesh. Now select all the cubes, add a rigid body, the rest of the settings you can leave at default. Add a new drop down menu with the timeline and press space. It takes some time, but if you are done, you can see we have a pretty nice simulation of how the cubes will fall into the glass. Select all the cubes, go to object, widget body and bake it to keyframes. It takes a while, but if you are done, you can see the animation without being simulated every time. It saves a lot of performance. And you can adjust the ending that it looks more real. In my case, I moved the last keyframes a bit further away, so it will slow down a bit that it looks much more natural. Okay, if you are done, we move the widget body constraint from the glass and, and add the fluid simulation, set it to effector. The rest of the settings you can leave by default. Add a new mesh, a cube, scale it up until it fits to the glass where your simulation of the liquid should be. Then also add fluid to the cube, set it to domain, then change the domain type to liquid, leave the samples at 32. For the final bake you should use 256. Turn on the little mesh box, set the start and the end keyframes, in my case 120 to 800. change the type to all and is resumable so you can stop the simulation before you reached the end frame. It makes it a lot easier to see how your simulation looks like. Now we need another object. We need an emitter for the liquid. Go to add, mesh, select a sphere or a icosphere, doesn't matter. Now move it up. So it will fit to one of the ice cube. Go to edit mode and duplicate it to the other ice cubes. Set the position. So every ice cube has a little sphere on the bottom where the liquid will be emitted from. Select also a fluid constraint for the emitter. Set it to flow, then flow type to liquid and flow behavior to inflow and then you should animate the emitter that you can stop the liquid after time because we don't want unlimited water. For that go to frame 599, make sure use flow is selected, then press I to make a keyframe, then move one frame forward to frame 600, deselect use flow, press I again to set another keyframe, so the water will stop at frame 600. Select the cube, make sure the mesh is selected because we want the water emitted from spheres we created before and if everything is set it up correctly, you can press bake all. It will take some time. If you are done, you can see 
how the water is coming from the spheres and you can imagine how it will look like with higher resolution. Now we need to set up the material for our water. For that make new material, delete the principal BSDF, press Shift A, S and search for volume absorption. Put the volume to the volume and then create a glass BSDF. Set the IOR to 1.33 and put the BSDF to surface. You can change the color of the liquid, bluish. It will look a little bit nicer. Then adjust the values of the ice cube shader and make keyframes so it will change after time to make a natural look of a melted ice cube. Now go to the sphere that's inside of the ice cube and do the same like with the ice cube material your emission strength to zero and press I to set a keyframe. Then select all your ice cubes, go to the first frame of your simulation, in my case 120, press I and select location, rotation and scale to fix the ice cubes in this position. Move to the frame you want your ice cubes completely melted, in my case 600. Press S and 0 to scale it to 0 so it's not visible anymore. Then press I and set the keyframe for scale. If you are done, you have to animate the ice cubes by hand. Just go every 100 or every 50 frames and select all the ice cubes, move the position to the bottom of the glass and rotate it a little bit. Um, just play around so it looks natural for you and don't forget to set the keyframes for, for every ice cube in this time. And if you are done, you will have something similar like this. Now you can set the camera to the position where you like it. In my case we will look to the sunrise because it looks much nicer. You can switch to different keyframes so you can you can see how your simulation looks like. And now you see one problem because we set it four spheres as emitter for our water and one of the spheres is too high so you would see the water emitter in the animation and that's what we don't want so we have to adjust our spheres a little bit until it fit to the water surface in the end frames and if you are done with it select the water simulation and free the bake 
can bake it again and then you should have a pretty nice looking animation so now let's let's check what we have done and now you see the water surface is much more natural but you see still some issues with the water surface so we can we can cheat a little bit with the golden metal that's around the glass so it will cover the water emitter and you will not see it in the final render and don't worry about the water glitches this is just because we used a low resolution for our simulation this will be fixed automatically if you use a higher resolution if you are done with testing you can set the frame rate to 30 set the color depth to 16 switch to the window view and you can set the noise threshold to 0 0.05 that's enough and reduce the maximum samples to 2048 and now you will have a very realistic ice cube melting simulation <laughs>